Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. Welcome to Grosvenor House and the What Car Cars of the Year Awards 2001. Small in size, the Ford car has been a winner four times already. With its new lower price, can it extend its winning run? Not if Seat can do anything about it. This stylishly updated model improves on the Arosa's fabled Volkswagen Group quality without affecting its price or specification. And last but not least, it's the Vauxhall Agia, a brave newcomer which adopts the practical lofty style of low-cost Japanese runabouts modified to suit European tastes. Last year we praised BMW's 5 Series when it won its fifth award. This year, a car costing less than £7,000 takes this honour. The winner just scrapes in by a fiver. It's the Ford KA or Ford car, however you want to pronounce it. Um, but a fiver is good enough. And the reasons it wins, uh, the reasons it's been an award winner with us for the past four years uh, before this year. Um, it's light, easy to drive, manoeuvrable for city use, which is where it'll spend most of its time. But it can actually mix it with Mondeos on the motorway if it has to. The Skoda Fabia, the winner just 12 months ago, returns to defend its position, still delivering a sensational blend of refinement, space, quality, value and low ownership costs. Challenger number one is the clever Toyota Yaris. Now even better since the 1.3-litre engine and versatile five-door body became available at a more affordable price. Challenger number two is the new Vauxhall Corsa, one of the super mini giants. It's now more fun to drive, smoother to ride in, safer and roomier. In fact, better all round. Once more, the Skoda Fabia. Last year, the Skoda Fabia won our overall car of the year award. So it's no surprise that it's back this year to pick up its class award. It's spacious, beautifully built. It's based on the latest VW super mini platform so it rides well, it handles well, and it's at as much at home around town as it is on the motorway. Reigning champion first, Ford's Focus. It's more fun than many sports cars, roomier than some large saloons, and built so that everything's in just the right place. But the new Honda Civic makes it seem small inside. This compact hatch borrows MPV ideas like a totally flat floor to offer acres of fuss-free space. For families on a tight budget, nothing really beats the 1.4-litre Seat Leon, though. Less than £11,000 gets you a stylish, safe, well-specced car built to superb standards. A new name adorns the best small hatch trophy this year. The winner is the Honda Civic. To be small hatch of the year, the Honda Civic has had to beat the Ford Focus, which is a fantastic car, but the Honda has beaten it largely because of the interior design of it. It's been designed from the inside out, it has a very flat floor, it's very much like an MPV. Uh, it has five seats, masses of legroom, the dash can look a little bit plain, but it's actually very well built as you'd expect with a Honda. Um, we've gone for the 1.6S model, it's £500 more than the 1.4 but for that you get 20 brake horsepower more which is, gives you greater refinement on the motorway, more power, um, it's very refined in town, it's economical, it's a very smooth engine. Skoda's award winning Fabia Super Mini is now available as a wagon with a 10 inch floor extension to go with this Mini's many virtues. Subaru sticks to its tried and tested all-wheel drive formula for the latest legacy, but adds fresher looks, stronger performance and a stiffer chassis to the mix. But the car both must oust is last year's winner, the Volvo V70. Safe, stylish and bristling with unique storage ideas, it is possibly the most famous wagon ever. Best Estate Car Award for 2001 goes once again to the Volvo V70. For the second year running, the Volvo V70 has carried away our Estate Car of the Year award. It combines Volvo's traditional virtues of safety, solidity and practicality with the company's desirable new image. Its boot is as big as most of its rivals, but that's not what impressed us the most. It's the little things like the row of luggage hooks to secure your shopping bags in the boot that really impressed us. 
The first contender is a newcomer combining hot rod retro looks and full five-seater versatility. The Chrysler PT Cruiser is the only car in this class with street cred. Time has not dulled the Fiat Multipler's ability to startle. Beneath the wacky exterior lies a six-seater that's well-conceived, practical and good to drive. Even more versatile is the seven-seat Vauxhall Zafira. Handily, its two rear chairs stow in the floor when not needed, so you don't have to leave them behind. So, plenty of different ideas, but once more, the best MPV of 2001 is the Vauxhall Zafira. This is the second year um, for a win for the Vauxhall Zafira. Um, again, we've gone for 1.6, 16-valve comfort um, for its blend of easy performance, slick five-speed gearbox, good comfort levels, which include uh, air conditioning. But of course, the thing that still makes the Zafira stand out from all other small MPVs is the two rear seats, which makes it a seven-seater. But it's not just a seven-seater. The rear seats fall completely flat into the rear floor, which means you don't have to take them out, you don't have to store them in the garage. When you, you can carry grand and granddad all the way, and then when you get there, pop the seats down, you've got a big load floor. Um, other benefits of a Zafira is it's based on an Astra chassis, which means you've got good handling, good ride, and it's good fun to drive. On your marks, it's the Ford Fiesta ZTEC S. With only 100 horsepower, it's not red hot, but it makes up for power deficiencies with an able chassis. Get set, it's the Renault Sport Clio 172, a car that's certainly not short of go. It belts out 172 horsepower, complemented by a sporty suspension setup and interior. Go! Our contenders are complemented by the uprated Vauxhall Astra SRI, now cheaper despite a new 2.2-litre engine that's a perfect match for the chassis. Best Hot Hatch Award for 2001 goes to the Vauxhall Astra SRI. And our Hot Hatchback of the Year this time didn't even feature in the awards last year. It's the Vauxhall Astra SRI. The reason it suddenly leaps from nowhere to front-running status is that in the past 12 months it's got a new engine, the 2.2-litre unit. Um, it not only gives more power to the car than the old 2-litre, but it's more flexible and more fun to drive, and it's also cleaner if you've got a green conscience. The Astra has always had a great chassis, and um, it's particularly true of the SRI, which it's lower, stiffer, bigger wheels on it and better brakes. Leading the challenge is Audi's TT, the winner for the past two years. With its Bauhaus-inspired styling, turbocharged engine and four-wheel drive chassis, it has all the right ingredients. Our next nominee is for people who want practicality and panache. The high-image BMW 330ci has that and comes with a new 3-litre engine. Finally, there's the fabulous Ford Puma, now costing less than £13,000. Small and nimble, with a peppy 1.7-litre engine that suits it to a T. Claiming a hat-trick of titles, what car's best coupe is still the Audi TT! If you're buying a coupe to get noticed, and let's face it, most people are, then you need to look no further than the Audi TT. It's absolutely stunning to look at. It's also beautiful inside. In fact, it's so well built inside that it could win award on its own for, it, for the interior. It's hard to believe it's based on the humble Golf because of the way of it, it handles. Having said that, it is four-wheel drive. It's 225 brake horsepower and it's got a six-speed gearbox as well. Glamorous styling, a shutterproof body, a hood that can repel a monsoon and sky-high image are some of the qualities that make the BMW 320ci such a hit. For elegance, the Mercedes CLK Cabriolet is hard to beat. Beautifully styled, well made and quite practical, it has old school charm and modern abilities. Meanwhile, the Peugeot 206cc is two cars for the price of one. Thanks to a clever folding metal roof, it can be a tin top coupe or a two plus two cabrio. We were spoilt for choice, but the award for best convertible goes to the Peugeot 206 Coupe Cabrio! I decided to give the Cabriolet Award this year to the Peugeot 206 CC as it provides two cars for the price of one, hence the name CC which stands for Coupe Cabriolet. 
Apart from the Mercedes SLK, it's the only other car on the road today to provide a hard metal roof which concertinas neatly into the boot at the touch of a button. Whereas the Merc costs the wrong side of 24 grand, the Peugeot is just under 16. It's powered by the 2 litre unit that also powers the 206 GTI. It's smooth with excellent low down pull. And to cope with the decrease in stiffness because of the roof being chopped off, Peugeot has softened the suspension. The result is a car with hardly any shake through the steering wheel and when the roof's up it really has all the solidity of a coupe. We begin with a four-time winner, the Lotus Elise. Now even more exciting thanks to revisions to the engine, chassis and interior. If there's one company synonymous with sports cars, it's Porsche. The brilliant Boxster lives up to the awesome reputation, but now delivers its thrills for less money. It's more of a surprise to find a Vauxhall here. The VX220 is based on the Lotus Elise, but is no clone. It's more usable and more stylish than the Norfolk car. After four years, a new name adorns this award. Our winner is the Vauxhall VX220. Um, there's a bit of irony about our favourite roadster this year. It's the Vauxhall VX220. Um, that car replaces the Lotus Elise, which has won the award for four years on the trot and of course it's based on an Elise um, which has itself been updated this year so it's, it's all closely related. To suggest that the VX is merely a copy of an Elise would be wrong though, it's got its own engine, it's got its own gearbox, it's got its own chassis settings and you get things like anti-lock brakes and an airbag as standard which don't come with the Lotus. We just think it's a little bit more user friendly, um, a bit easy for the unskilled driver to really get some enjoyment out of and above all else it looks better. And you too can be James Bond with the first offering, the BMW Z8. This four-wheeled film star combines evocative 50s looks with V8 power. On to the first of two Porsches, the 911 Carrera 4. It has the essentials of any supercar, a great engine and a chassis to match, but it's also painless to use and own. It's under threat from within though, for this year, Porsche has launched the 911 Turbo, endowed with 420 horsepower and the ability to handle it safely. Supercar for 2001 is the Porsche 911 Turbo. Last year, our supercar of the year was Porsche 911 Carrera 4. Um, we didn't think that could be toppled. However, Porsche had different ideas and along came the 911 Turbo. Um, it uses the same four-wheel drive system as the Carrera 4, but under the bonnet is 420 brake horsepower, flat six engine, twin turbos. The figures are just staggering, as much as the performance, not to 16.4.2 seconds, 190 miles an hour, and an 86,000 pound price tag, which does sound a lot, but when you consider the performance, the grip, the handling, it's a Porsche, and all the interior quality that you get with that, um, it looks like a bit of a bargain. You don't get a CD player, which seems a little mean, but other than that, um, you will never ever be disappointed in this car. BMW's first 4x4 is a belter. The X5's talents in the mud are limited, but it drives like an executive saloon and looks ready to cross the Arctic. The Land Rover Freelander's blend of looks, on-road civility and off-road strengths are well known. Now it's all the better thanks to a new turbo diesel engine. Another new executive 4x4 is the Lexus RX300. It's already gone down a storm in the States. Now it's set to repeat that success here with a smooth drive and bags of kit. Best 4x4 for 2001 is the BMW X5. I first drove the BMW X5 out in the States in 1999 and was pretty blown away. It takes some guts for a motor manufacturer to take an off-roader and let you drive it on a racing circuit, but that's exactly what they did with the BMW X5. It really is that good. It may not be good on the mud, but uh, on the black stuff it really is sensational. And around the race circuit, you'd be very, very surprised. All the usual BMW trappings, superb build, high image, and uh, it's the best 4x4 by far, to coin somebody else's phrase. Added to good build quality and resale strength, the A4 is now sleeker, roomier, better value and great to drive. 
and it had to be to compete with our next contenders. First, the BMW 3 Series, a real driver's car made even better with the arrival of the new 320i. But the latest Mercedes C-Class has been stealing some of its thunder. Sharper looks, improved dynamics and more cabin room make this a desirable exec. The standards in this class are now frighteningly high, but from a superb trio, our winner is the new Audi A4. The compact executive class is possibly one of the most fiercest fought of all now. Um, the top selling car in that class in the UK is the BMW 3 Series, but we've had two brand new contenders this year in the form of the Mercedes C-Class and the Audi A4. Both are infinitely better than the cars they replace. They're roomier, higher quality, more enjoyable to drive, more features on. And of course, they both come down heavily in price with the price cutting that's been going on this year. The reason the Audi comes out ahead of the Mercedes is quite simple. It's a little bit cheaper and considerably less to lease on a monthly contract, which is all important to business users. Latin style and spirit mark out the first contender, the Alpha 166. It also has fine long-distance refinement, while price cuts have made it relatively cheap too. The BMW 520i has much to do to replace the awesome 523i, a five times award winner. A range upgrade is topped by the introduction of a new 2.2-litre engine. The Volvo S80 is the comfort option in this class. Smooth styling, a well-planned interior and good safety go hand in hand with a plush ride and strong performance. Ladies and gentlemen, last year's winner couldn't be with us tonight. The record-breaking BMW 523i is no longer. So please welcome a new name on the best executive trophy, almost. Making an astonishing six awards out of six for the 5 Series. This year's winner is the BMW 520i. Okay, it was actually almost a shock this year in the executive category because for the first time in six years, the BMW 523 hasn't won. The main reason for that, of course, is that BMW has stopped making it. So the car that wins this year is its successor, the 520. It's got a new engine, a new 2.2 litre engine, but it still has the same power as the 23 that won last year. It's more economical and has the same emissions, so it's just as friendly for company car tax. Most importantly, it's what BMW hasn't changed that keeps the 5 Series winning again for its sixth successive year. It's still a superbly built car and no saloon drives any better than a BMW 5 Series. Um, if I were a betting man, I'd probably bet the 5 Series will win again next year. And who wouldn't be swayed by blue blood Brit charisma of the Jaguar XJ8? After the recent price cuts, it's even more of a bargain. After falling off the pace, Lexus is back with the LS430. The refinement is better than ever, and there's more of everything else in this superbly made saloon. The car to beat, though, is the Mercedes S-Class, which has seen huge price reductions this year. That allows us to talk about the cheapest V8, the S430. After two years of Mercedes S320 dominance, we have a new winner. Our best luxury car is the Mercedes S430. The Mercedes S-Class is without doubt the most luxurious car on the road today. Not only does it have more gadgets than the Space Shuttle, but it also provides huge driver enjoyment as well. For such a big car, it really inspires the driver with confidence. And things like the superb air sprung suspension means it rides beautifully. It was quite a difficult decision which S-Class to give the award to this year. But after a hefty price cut last summer, we now favour the V8-engined S430. For the extra money, you really do get a little bit of extra power and performance and it's really worth it. If you want a boardroom, five-star hotel and limousine all rolled into one, then look no further than the Mercedes S-Class.
What car's car of the year for 2001 is the Ford Mondeo. 12 months ago, if you'd asked what we'd be looking for in a car of the year for 2001, we'd have said we wanted it to be more spacious than before, more refined, better to drive, more economical, kinder for the environment, and safer too. The real wish list would have added and that it would be cheaper than the car it replaced and have a better warranty. And that's exactly what we've got with the new Mondeo. It's so much better than the car it replaces, it's almost unbelievable. But perhaps the biggest praise is when you look at the cars it's actually beaten in its own segment. Cars like the new Passat, the new Laguna and the Honda Accord. And other cars that could quite easily have scooped a car of the year award such as the Honda Civic and BMW X5. But the Mondeo trumps the lot. It's the best car we've driven over the past 12 months. We're in a little bit of a political environment everywhere and uh, the phrase Mondeo man I think entered uh, the English language at least in the run up to the last general election here in uh, the UK in 97 and I guess uh, Tony Blair can now call a new election since we've got a new Mondeo. Tonight has been about uh, great new products, that's what this industry is about and I'd like to accept uh, this award in the spirit of uh, innovation and creativity in the automotive industry. So I thank you uh, all very much again. Thank you. Thanks, Steve.